For more than a decade, the BRICS group has been comprised of five countries dominated by China. Especially since member Russia launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine, the group has positioned itself as a counterweight to Western democracies that dominate the world economy. Now its membership has doubled, welcoming five new members, including oil-rich countries in the Middle East. There's no shortage of heavyweights in the BRICS club. China, the world's second largest economy, holds the top position within the group. The Asian superpower openly demands to be seen as a leader within this alliance. During a BRICS summit in Johannesburg last August, Chinese President Xi Jinping welcomed the decision to expand the group, stating that we must use the BRICS plus cooperation and accelerate expansion. More countries should join the BRICS family, pool their knowledge and unite their efforts to make global governance more fair and reasonable. However, critics argue that the current expansion plans further transforms the group into a club of non-democratic nations. In addition to China, existing BRICS members include Brazil, Russia, India and South Africa. BRICS was established in 2009. On January 1st, five new members have joined. Oil-rich countries like Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates and Iran, along with Egypt and Ethiopia, two key players in Africa. Argentina was initially part of the expansion plans but withdrew after recent elections. The BRICS alliance is described as highly diverse. Its primary goal is to establish a counterbalance to the West, especially the United States and the European Union, and potentially introduce its own currency as an alternative to the US dollar. The new BRICS group represents about a third of global economic power and just under half of the world's population. Let's discuss the expansion of BRICS further with Rob Watts from DW Business. So, um, just walk us through the backstory. Why the newcomers? Yeah, well, it really does come down to that stated aim of BRICS, which is to be a counterweight to the West. It feels like the European Union and the United States for far too long have had far too much sway when it comes to things like the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund. So it wants to set itself up as the representative of the Global South, as it's sometimes called, but also the, the global majority. And so by adding these five extra countries, it's bolstering that argument. And you only have to look at the countries that it's invited to join to see how that tactic is supposed to work. It's added these three countries in the Middle East, its first countries in the Middle East. So we've got Iran, Saudi Arabia and the UAE. And then we've also got it strengthening its foothold in Africa as well with Ethiopia and Egypt being added. And Argentina was supposed to join. It didn't. We can perhaps talk about that in a second. But you could see the intention there was to also strengthen its position in South America. So that's one of the key tactics here. And I mean, that's a big blow that Argentina is now not joining. It's a pretty curious case, isn't it? It's a really strange one. And they only pulled out of the plan to join 10 days before they were supposed to, on December the 22nd, which in geopolitical terms is, is last minute, really. But at the same time, it won't necessarily have come as a surprise to the existing members of BRICS, because if you've been following the campaign of Javier Millet, the new president of Argentina, you'd know that his eyes are not looking towards Beijing, they're more looking towards Brussels and particularly towards Washington. He has a very different foreign policy to that of his predecessor. And so this is less of a surprise there. The interesting thing is, though, if Javier Millet and Argentina are looking towards Washington, are they going to get the response from there that they want? Because he is quite the character, as people will have already noticed, and his ideology doesn't necessarily align with that of a lot of governments in Europe and in the United States. So they might not be rubbing their hands about uh, Argentina's decision not to join BRICS uh, in the way that you might think. What does the overall expansion mean for the West? Well, it's difficult to spin it as a positive news for the West, obviously, because BRICS exists almost entirely to, to rival them. But at the same time, I do think you can overstate the impact of this. BRICS is not a particularly cohesive group at the moment. You have to think that China's objectives are very different to those of Russia. They're very different to those of India and South Africa. So they're not necessarily all pulling in the same direction in a way that could be a, a real threat to the Western order of things. But at the same time, Europe and the US does have to keep an eye on this because 40 countries expressed an interest in joining 
BRICS ahead of these six being invited. 25 formally applied to join BRICS. And that does rather suggest that the West is losing its sway in parts of the world, particularly in the South, and that though we've just added five members to BRICS, there could be more added in the not-too-distant future. Rob Watts, thank you.